and this is part two of where we are trying to or attempting to resurrect this radio this radio has been had some serious damage done to it it's got parts missing they've got tracks damaged we've got all manner of problems so it was basically a scrapper and we're trying to bring it back into a fully operational radio okay so if we just zoom in you can see i've now this is the the if can i think it's t708 um and the primary side of the can was um it was open circuit on the coil so i've removed that as you can see and i've got another coil of the same model uh, number part number here which is in the noise blanker circuit now i'm debating whether to actually take that out and swap it over because if we did there's all things being equal that should not affect the receive it just means that when we go to switch the noise blanker in it won't work but the the the, the receive should be then operational but i'm a little bit worried because obviously i've taken this one out and then as i've taken it out there i've noticed the other side of the coil is now not working you know <laughs> so that's something i've done and i'm just concerned if i take this out i may damage it so i'm gonna to have to think of a way we can do this oh yeah by the way we did ask if anybody could supply us a, a coil from a scrap set we've managed to find one and i do appreciate the offers uh, yeah, it, that's uh, very kind of you, uh, but we have managed to find one. Um, it's going to take a while to get here, so in the meantime, I'm just what I'm thinking of if we can swap this over. Okay, this is the transformer that uh, I've removed, and I've taken it out of its um, can. And if we look carefully, uh, you can imagine these things are tiny. Um, if you look carefully, you can see these fine wires. Now, basically what they do, they go up and then they go around this bobbin and form a coil. And what's happened is, as you can see that these wires have snapped off. <clears throat> and consequently, it goes open circuit. And if it goes open circuit, that's it. It won't, simply won't work. Uh, there's also a capacitor in here as well, a little tubular uh, capacitor. I think they're ceramic, or it could be uh, mica. But, yeah, that's what happens. And what's happening is, is if the slug inside is tight and somebody tries to, you try and turn it, when and it's very tight, you force it, the bobbin, I don't even see that, but the bobbin moves and if it moves there's very little give in these wires and they just simply snap and that's it game over now you probably think to yourself well just get an if transform you see them on ebay well it's not as simple as that because there's quite a bit going on in here so we'll, we'll go through it quickly okay we'll just go through this real quick in these IF transformers, you can see there's a capacitor, and that has obviously got a capacitive value, and we've also got a coil here, which is making up our transformer, but that's also got an inductive value. Now, those two together in that formation is a, it's basically a tuned resonant circuit. It's called a parallel tuned resonant circuit, or a tank circuit. And basically what happens is, when that we've tuned the um, inductor with the you know ferrite slug we tune it to resonant frequency the uh, at resonant frequency we have high impedance at that point and it'll let the information pass through and obviously outside of those frequencies for this gets a bit complicated but outside of the resonant frequency the impedance goes low and it will collapse the idea is it collapses the RF signals. So hence we can tune. But th then there's a bit more because we've got this coil on this side. Now these transformers have ratios. So you've got a thing called, um, yeah, which the two, you've got a turns ratio, 
which is literally how many turns are on one compared to how many turns are on the other side. And then we've got the impedance ratio, which is the turns ratio squared. Now, it's important that this is correct because if it's not, this isn't going to work properly. And as just as you've got SWR, you know, VSWR, we get exactly the same in radio stages. And these things need to match, and especially to this, this uh, crystal filter. So it's imperative we get the right one. Okay, we've got a bit of an update. I think I've managed to fix it. Um, it was very tedious. And it's used a bit of magnification, but I think I've, what I've done, I've just extended the wires, then tied, tied them on and soldered them together. And it's checking out um, on the multimeter, so we're getting continuity now. So the only thing to do is get this back in the rig and see if it works. So we'll give it a quick sanity check before I do the final soldering. So uh, we're on resistance. What are we get in so it's the primary side 1.1 ohms looking good this is the secondary side 0.6 of an ohm mm. das ist gut ist fantastisch what isn't so fantastic is this looking here by the looks of it. I don't know if you can see that but it looks like there's some kind of Vaseline or silicon grease or something. Why would somebody put that on? And it, they, these look like they've been so mucked about with. Now that's part of the transmitter the IF, I think. But we'll get to that later. So let's get this soldered in and see what we've got. Well, that sounds a hell of a lot better. Um, we'll see the, the coils in. We'll see it's this one here. Well, that's a lot, but it was dropping out at minus 85 last time, so let's have a... Yeah. That's good. Okay, we'll do a, some performance testing on it later. We'll need to just check the signal to noise, but... Okay, so... Still nothing on AM. We, we should be hearing something there. And the sidebands still seem dead, but that wants a bit of cleaner on it or something. We know we've got a good front end, so uh, let's start working our way down this receiver. Okay, let's have a bit of an update. So we know the front end's good, and so I've been testing from the other side of the crystal filter and this is obviously this is obviously the IS strip um, and our, our signals coming through we, we're getting a signal through the uh, crystal filter so that looks good and you know I'm what I'm doing is, is I've been dabbing around these areas with this an oscilloscope basically what I use is a germanium diode this is just how I do it. I mean, there's lots of different ways you can do it. But I just use a Germanium diode on a scope probe <coughs> connected to the scope. And what I'm doing is, in, is injecting uh, a modulated signal. Um, and obviously, in this case, I've got it modulating on AM. Um, the radio is set to AM, and the frequency I'm putting into it is the tuned frequency on the front. So in theory, that will give us our IF frequency um, with that modulated tone and using the diode will demodulate it. It's as simple as that. Um, you can use signal traces or you could make a signal trace, you know, by simply putting one of these on the front of an amplifier. You probably need a cap as well, but yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll show you what uh, I've found. So if we... I'm going to see if we can get both a bit of both in there. Sorry about the camera angle. Okay, so if I dab around, 
I can see the signal as soon as, when it comes out of the crystal filter. If we look carefully, hang on. Yeah, you can see it. That's that's a one kilohertz tone. If it'll work, just bear with me. There, and then if we start going down in through the because there's multiple transistors in here. You see, we uh, it's off the charts. It's what I'd expect. I'd really want it to uh, be amplifying. But as we get closer to, there's a an IF transformer here. When we get to the transformer, it's it's lost its magnitude. So there's a problem around around this can. And what I'll do, I'll show you on the the circuit diagram. Okay, so yeah, if we come down, that's our crystal filter. And what I'm doing is we've got there's a, an IF amp here it's for ALC. Exactly how that's working, I'm not quite sure. But I can. This is what I'm checking. So I'm seeing this. I'm getting. I'm seeing the signal here. I'm getting it here. It's, it's been amplified. It's here it's it's amplified. This is a seven. Um, well, it's an eight volt RX rail. So. When it's in receive mode, that gives you eight volts uh, positive. And what we have here is there's two transistors. Now I've been looking around here, I've got a bit confused. Now, where this is being fed from is on the other side of this IF can, because this is our RX8. We've got a resistor here, and that goes through this IF transformer with a little tank circuit in it and that will you know we will be putting um a, a you know a rail a voltage rail onto these trans transistors now the problem here it just drops down it, it drops down now i tested the can well for dc with the the multimeter and that all seems fine and what i did I tested here now this is obviously 8 volts and this goes really low and what I think is happening is I think this capacitor here C612 has gone short circuit um, and it's pulling it down you can actually feel it's actually getting warm so and that resistor is getting warm so hopefully it's nothing in the can doing it it's, it's it, it, pulling the current it's here and I think that's what the problem is. I also found another problem as well. And if we come down here, where is it? Hang on, let me just uh, sorry about this. Ah, it's here. Okay, so what we this section here, this is for the single sideband, and this is it's basically the carrier oscillator. It gets used in the for the transmitter as well but what it's creating is is some frequencies that we mix with the the sideband component you know in sidebands and what it's basically saying on upper on yeah on upper sideband you get this frequency 10.6925 and on lower sideband we expect to see 10.69 at uh, 10.6975 if I can say it, and I think there's a test point somewhere. Yeah, that's this, which is tied onto it, which is that's the output, and it tells you there. So we had a problem because we weren't getting anything on upper sideband. Uh, where is it? Yeah. So there's these diode packs, and basically what this is doing, it's acting a bit like a an OR gate. So that's upper sideband, that's lower sideband, or have I got it right? Yeah, so that's upper sideband, that's lower sideband. So that just goes high when the switch, when you turn the rotary switch. And what's happened is one of these diodes for the upper sideband has just gone open circuit. So I've just tagged a, a, a small signal diode onto it. Now these things do go, it's quite common to see these go in you know radio equipment that's had the transmitter uh, messed about with because what tends to happen the stray rf 
seems to destroy these things. And I know from my time with Icom, I used to change quite a lot of them. So uh, yeah, but uh, that's that's the problem, and that that's now present. But getting back to up here, where were we? Yeah, it's, it's here. I think that's the problem. Okay, so this is R one one eight, which is a sixty eight ohm uh, resistor. And if we go on one side of it carefully, we can see you've got 7.49. So I said, I call it an RX8, but that's what happens when it's in receive. And look on the other side, it's very low. It's like 0 0.8 of a volt. Now I'd expect that to be a lot higher. And what I suspect is, is this capacitor here, which is uh, C612, I believe, I think that's uh, got the problem. So, okay. So we removed that capacitor. Didn't make any difference. Um, so the only thing it can be is that IF can. Another one. Okay. Um, so if you look at it now, it's trying to receive, and we're getting a bit of action on the meter. We're sending quite a strong signal. Now watch what happens when I play with that can. I've added a bit of heat to it. Let's try it this way. There it is. I've got a problem in that can. Uh, okay, let me try and figure this out. I really don't want to take this one out, but... Uh, yeah. yeah. So actually we've got the meters where we're putting in a very strong signal by the way. So let's just back that off. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I have done some soldering underneath. Um, I think I've figured out what's caused this because if we look inside, obviously this is our can here and then we've got all these, where we've had some bloody mess about with it and I reckon, I've been finding solder blobs and I think some solders got under splashed underneath there. Now I've just heated the, the pins, the legs of the IF transformer, and um, yeah, and she's come back. It it really needs taking out, so I'm, I may just take that out and just check it. But we're injecting minus yeah minus seventy three dBm or thereabouts. Um, I've got no idea. You know, this thing will need a full alignment. I don't know whether this is correct. And if we look down, you see this diode here that was floating. That's the one that's doing the carrier oscillator. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop the video here. Uh, I'm going to order the parts that are missing. Um, I've got quite a, a number of parts, but I, I need to order a, a MOSFET for this. Um, and what we're going to have to do is make some little daughter boards up so that we can... It's going to be a bit tedious, but it'll work. I'm sure it will. Um, so we can get this thing going. So, uh, okay. Well, there it is. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.